Um, can I ask you to like briefly outline, outline your role in the film, like where he came from in the text? And <laughs> Jesus, that's a difficult one. Um, okay, I think, and I could be wrong, that Lewis Carroll once mentioned time as being a person. And, but he's not really mentioned much in Through the Looking Glass. So the challenge here, and it was actually James Bobin, the director's idea, was to have him as the, you know, as the villain. You know, times, you know, you know, we're all fighting time in a way. Well, sort of. But um, so the idea was to create this character that Lewis Carroll hadn't really written for, which is a challenge because all the other characters are kind of brilliantly absurd and completely unique, which is why kids have loved the story for a century. So, you know, the challenge was how to create a new character that would do justice to Lewis Carroll. So hopefully I haven't buggered it up too much. What, who, did you base it on anyone? The accent, the mannerisms and all that kind of thing? Um, I mean, it was inspired and influenced by some people. I mean, the costume, not really. You know, the costume actually was slightly inspired by Angelina Jolie in Mag Maleficent because I wanted it to be, you know, extremely pompous. But then I've got very slender sort of female legs. Um, and so I'm wearing tights. So I wanted it, if you remember Mr. Strong from the kind of Mr. Men, I wanted it to have that kind of silhouette, a very big up here and very small down there. I'm not talking about, I know what you're, you dirty bastard. <laughs> um, so, um, but yeah, in terms of the voice, I wanted him kind of Germanic, but not like your obvious, you know, Germanic voice. So a few different influences. And then in terms of the way he speaks and his language, I wanted him to be incredibly pretentious. And so originally I had this idea that he'd carry around the grand book of time. But then actually when you looked at it, it was actually a thesaurus. So he was just looking for incredibly pompous ways of saying very simple things in order to uh, impress everyone. Can I ask you about the hardest part of this shoot for you? The hardest part? Well... I think it was the costume, actually, because the... I mean, firstly, listen, I'm an actor. It's not a particularly hard job. I'm not a coal miner. You know, I'm not... It's not like, you know, doing a normal job. You've got a trailer, which is basically a minivan with a bed in it and a TV, and you've got people bringing you, you know, drinks and food. So it's never really that hard, to be honest. And my fellow actors will uh, hate me for saying that. But... You know, the difficult thing with this one was the costume was so heavy and so hot. I'm wearing ermine. Um, I don't think it's genuine fur, in case any of the animal rights protesters want to chuck acid on me. But it was so hot that they, because it's a green screen studio, they have hundreds of very, very bright lights. And as a result, I was almost fainting the whole time, and they would have to bring me ice packs that I would stick in under my shirt to kind of cool me down. Not a brilliant story, but that's what I've got.